welcome to the barn renovation wrap-up video. I'm sorry I didn't film this whole project. It was just kind of sporadic over a year. I, re I really wish I had knocked it out in one fell swoop. But above this horse barn was a guest apartment that needed a bit of work. And we completely gutted it and turned it into a sort of a nice little mountain cabin situation. This, this area actually used to be the door to load hay up into the hayloft. Um, basically, if you follow this trim here, this dropped all the way down and was a big door that kind of looked like that door there. So we had to reframe that for the window and put in a bunch of new boards to make it look like it sort of always was like that. Uh, that that tube up there is the condensation drain for the two split units. Unfortunately, these air conditioners are very temperamental in terms of their draining. They didn't like the bends to snake the condensate drain all through the wall. Uh, so this was just a much better solution to prevent any drips. While we are outside here, this is uh, this video is half for everybody following me and half for the client. So I just wanted to you know give them some details. Here's the split AC unit, and all the pipes are run in the these chases here. Like no maintenance to be done here. I mean you may want to you may recharge it to because we added some length. You know we basically added 10 feet, 10, 12 feet to each run, but. Uh, with both units on, it keeps this place 70 degrees no problem. There's tons of insulation in there, as you know. The power for that air conditioner runs up here, back into the tack room, which is blocked off right now, but one of the circuits I labeled in there is now the AC circuit. All right, so let's go inside and take a look. Well, actually, I'll bring you around here first. When we were gutting the place, it became apparent that the original sliding doors had to go. They were not easily removed from their frames and underneath the sill area had completely rotted out. So we got these nice new wood aluminum cased sliding patio windows or patio doors reframed new openings, retrimmed everything, put in flashing up above the trim, and rebuilt the whole sill area, which I'll show you as we walk up there. You can see here, this there's flashing underneath the two sliding doors. This That whole area was rotted out. This whole deck probably needs to be replaced. It's, it's, it's getting close to time. But we ripped up all the rot, replaced the subfloor, added new wood, caulked everything in, flashing taped everything, added metal flashing, and same up there. And that, that's a tricky situation to do because usually flashing tucks behind siding. The way this barn was built is it's just a pole barn with these big boards on the side. So we cut a groove into there and tucked the flashing in and caulked everything so that's as sealed as we can get it. This is now a new attic vent that uh, vents any hot air or keeps the air moving in the winter so you don't get ice damming. All right, let's go inside. All right, as we walk in here, this is the kind of the great room kitchen. And you'll have to excuse the, uh, you'll have to excuse the, um, the walls. Really the last step here, which I'm not gonna handle, is a hand troweled plaster finish on all the uh, drywall. So this was just prepped for that. You know, it would have been awesome to take pictures and show it off with a total finish on it, but we that's, that's really the last step for them and we gotta get out of here, so that's what it is. Yeah, so you walk in, you got your light switches here. This is the kitchen, great room. And then this switch out here is a four-way that controls these uh, exterior lights. What's nice is this switch, there's two other switches that, that attach to that. There's one on the side of the barn by the hose, 
and then there's one inside the garage area of the barn. So I sort of planned out the electrical so that if you were walking home at night, you could flip on the lights out at the entrance to the walkway and then turn them off up here. Or if you you know wanted to turn them on from the workshop area, you could do that. The whole place is paneled in this beetle kill pine with Douglas fir trim. We have uh, I guess it would be Oregon Douglas fir flooring. Uh, this is a nice little detail that um, I'm pretty proud of. The original posts for this barn, they I feel like they may have raised the roof because at about this height, there was just a complete, it was the end of the post and they just sistered on uh, another post up into the, the ceiling and either they needed to extend the posts or they had raised this roof at one point. So originally this was wrapped in drywall and you couldn't see anything and we thought it'd be cool to scarf on a new post. So we cut the scarf joint in the old, um, some sort of ponderosa pressure treated pole and the new beetle kill post and use the Kanawatsugi Japanese joint to join them together. Lifted up the roof about, this is about 16 and 17 millimeters and locked that hole in, that, that whole thing together. Kitchen is all custom. Uh, frame and panel, poplar cabinets with a uh, blue milk paint. All the manuals, stuff in this drawer. Butcher block countertops, farmhouse sink, sort of hidden uh, dishwasher. I guess not hidden, but it's slim looking. It's a tiny little kitchen. I mean, this, we, we packed up. This is where you gotta use custom cabinets sometimes. You can't be taking off the shelf stuff and expect it to work. You know, we, we have these little areas and we, we fill them with these slots so that you could put your cutting boards or your uh, your cookie pans or whatever and maximize the storage. The same thing here, this little tiny cabinet opens up to a, a uh, Lazy Susan. So you put all your spices and, and this, that, and the other thing. Garbage disposal, frame and panel, interior. This little sink. Some floating shelves here for uh, teacups or <laughs> plates and stuff like that. You know, it's gonna, it's definitely, it's not intended for, you know, a huge amount of cookware, but you can get a lot done in here. Quite a bit of storage we, we managed to pack in. Counter depth refrigerator. That finishes out the kitchen. Also, this big hood vent to the outside. This was, um, it's a, quite a challenge to rough frame everything in place such that you can be guaranteed that your stove lines up with your vent with cabinets that have to wrap around it and fit it. So we, we kind of nailed that one. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, one of the split units is here. And speaking of that, we have the heat, the, the family room kitchen heat control the heat, it, the heat can be provided by the split units, I believe, but also by these baseboards. So there's a thermostat that controls the little baseboard here and the big one over here. And over here you have the fan control for the attic fan. Moving into the bedroom. First we have the pantry room closet. It's got its own little light switch here. This, this could be outfitted with shelves or drawers or boxes or whatnot. This would probably be the predominant of your kitchen storage. The two main doors, the bathroom and the bedroom, are all these custom made frame and panel pocket doors. Which are pretty trick. Definitely a lot less 
you have a lot, you can maximize your space a lot more when you have pocket doors because you literally can put stuff on either side and you won't have to worry about the door swinging out. The only challenge here was this closet, obviously. You can't really come out of the bedroom when someone's in the closet. And then you have your switches here, which then turn off your family room and kitchen lights right before you go to bed or whatever. Coming on in here, you have your bedroom lights and fan control light, or light switch. Weird little stepper motor fan. Kind of jiggles when it turns on. Uh, the, re the remote for that is right here, but it's programmed to just be on max when you turn the switch off, so you can just deal with the switch. You don't have to fuss around with uh, the remote if you don't want to. Into the bedroom. So we wanted to maximize storage again here, so two other features for that is there's this uh, Japanese toolbox style lift-off panel that goes into the crawl space behind the whole kitchen. You know, it's, it's rough framed in there and there's plumbing pipes and stuff, but you know, if you wanted to store some stuff that you really didn't need to access much long-term or whatever, you could put it behind there. You imagine putting the bed sticking out from the, the wall there. So that's why we have the outlets on either side. And the other storage features got these twin slider closet doors. And in here, you have a shallow closet that gives way to a much deeper closet, and that's where the sub-panel is for the electrical. Which, unclear if that is code, but this is how we do things up in the mountains. It's definitely accessible when you need to. Uh, you can put a, put a hanging clothes bar, some bins back here. Turning our attention back over this side. Here's the other thermostat for the baseboard here, and there's a baseboard in the bathroom. This post we had to install new. It actually used to be right here, and that wasn't gonna work for us. So we reframed what we needed to underneath and shifted this post onto a, a span below it to support the roof. And that allowed us to make this corner here, which on the opposite side of this is the shower. And this little corner then could be for a dresser or some sort of extra piece of furniture and plug on the, on the wall up there if you wanted to put a, a hang on the wall TV, keep the cables behind. As you can see in this outlet, there's an ethernet port and several of the ethernet ports. So the whole thing is wired for ethernet to where you might want it. So here you put your TV, there's some areas out there for desks. Same thing here, this corner could be for a desk. This is kind of a multi-use area. You can put your crib here for your baby or a desk. And eventually you could put a big soaking tub here, which was sort of a long-term plan. It's actually roughed in and plumbed underneath for a standalone soaking tub so that you kind of an ensuite bath. You have your bathroom here and you can soak looking at the beautiful trees and mountains. Here's the inside of that window. Live edge walnut windowsill. Here you can imagine the view from that soaking tub. Pretty. Uh, that's why we extended this sill here to make a little ledge. All right, into the bathroom. This is the room that I'm most proud of. I think it has a lot of cool design in it. And we maximize the space as much as possible. It's a fairly big bathroom for this space. Natural slate tile. Another custom frame and panel cabinet. Uh, with the milk paint, walnut, live edge top, a little vessel sink action. Hang, yeah, I think you have to get kind of a cool mirror to hang here because it's, you know, maybe you have a little tiny mirror here or you have a little weird hanging mirror. It's not exactly conducive to having a mirror. Japanese toilet situation. 
So this is a single piece American toilet with a imported from Japan JDM Toto washlet. Everything is in Japanese, so you better press the right button or you're in for a surprise. Uh, it's pretty amazing, the technology that goes into this toilet. Uh, oh, another pocket door. You have your lights for the bathroom and a vent fan, which is above the shower. Get that humidity out of here. All this wood in here. The other baseboard below the towel rack so the heat will warm up the towels in the winter. That's kind of a, it's a whole lesson I learned living here. There's this house that this property is on has uh, almost all the shower racks are above heaters and it makes for a pleasant winter experience. And here's the shower. Kind of a simple um, prefab shower uh, insert, but it's tucked in all the this little wood cavity, and I think it looks pretty nice. I mean, for you know, obviously doing this with all tile would be a much more luxe way of doing it, but I think it turned out pretty pretty clean. There's the other slit unit. We got two smoke detectors that are linked together. I think that's it. I think that's it. What, what's left for this place is that plaster to really bring it home. And uh, obviously you gotta put some furniture in here. This was fun to build. I wish it, I wish it didn't take as long as it did. I you know, apologize for that. It was worth the wait, I think. Well, it was worth taking the time to do it right. And uh, it's really nice to have a supportive client that gave me a lot of freedom to, you know, take the reins with the design and, and go with what looked good. Cool. So that's one, um, that's one project in the bag, and that's the last one for us in Boulder, Colorado. So we'll see ya.